In this video, we're going to look at an example involving a rectangle that's going to give us an opportunity to practice operations on rational expressions. So the first thing we want to do is find an expression for the area of the rectangle. And the next thing we're going to do is find an expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. So here's our rectangle, and we know that the length is 2k plus 1 over 24, and the width is 3 over 4k plus 2. So let's start with the area. The first thing you're going to have to recall is what the formula for area of a rectangle is, and hopefully you remember. Hopefully you remember that it is length times width. So in order to find the area of this rectangle, we simply need to take the length times the width. Our length is 2k plus 1 over 24. And our width is 3 over 4, oops, I wrote 2 and I said 4. Let's try that again. 4k plus 2. All right, so you might think, well, I'm done. That's good. I'm going to go on to the next one. But really what you need to do is simplify that expression. You need to recall the rules for multiplying fractions. What can we do when we're multiplying fractions and how do we multiply fractions? If you had a very simple example like 2 thirds times 4 fifths, you recall that you're going to multiply straight across. So that's just going to be 8 over 15. We need to do the same thing here, just multiply straight across. If I give you another simple example for multiplying fractions, say 2 thirds over 9 elevenths, hopefully you're remembering something else you can do when you're multiplying fractions, which is cancel cancel a common factor. And that's really what we want to look at in this example here. Is there anything that we can cancel? Okay, so let's go back over here and think about canceling. Before I can cancel, I have to think about what the factors of these numbers are. 3 and 24, I, I can see I'm going to be able to cancel because 24 is 3 times 8. This other set of binomials here, 2k plus 1 and 4k plus 2, I may have to think about that a little bit more. What are the factors of either of those binomials? Well, the first one, 2k plus 1, that doesn't factor. It doesn't have any common factors in it. I'm just going to leave it like that. The 24, I'm going to go ahead and write as 3 times 8, so I can cancel it with the 3. And you could probably do that in your head without writing that. That's OK. Now, 4k plus 2, there's a common factor in that binomial. What's the common factor? Hopefully you see that it's 2. So I'm going to take a 2 out of there, which leaves me with 2k plus 1. And yes, I can cancel that 2k plus 1 with the other 2k plus 1 in the numerator of the first fraction. So let's go ahead and do that. I can cancel this 2k plus 1 with this 2k plus 1. And then I can cancel this 3 with this 3. Now everything's canceled out of the numerator. Remember, when you're canceling, you're dividing. So 3 goes into 3 once and 3 once. And 2k, goes, 2K plus 1 goes into itself once and once. If everything cancels out of the numerator, what that means is you have a factor of 1 left in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have 8 times 2, which is 16. So there's our expression for the area of the rectangle. All the variables dropped out. That doesn't always happen, but in this case it did. So there's your answer, area of a rectangle, 1 over 16. OK, let's look at the perimeter. So in order to find the perimeter, we need to add up all the sides or we could take 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. The length is 2k plus 1 over 24, and we need two of those because of the top and the bottom. Or you could add it to itself. It's the same thing. And then same thing with the width. You have 3 over 4k plus 2, and we need to multiply that by 2 because we have the left side and the right side. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's write that out. So my perimeter is going to be 2 times my length, which is 2k plus 1 over 24, plus 2 times my width, which is 3 over 4k plus 2. All right, so what we have is a multiplication problem, and then we're going to have an addition problem. Let's do the multiplication first, because we have to by the order of operations. We could think of this 2 as 2 over 1 and see if we can cancel, just like we did over here with this multiplying. Looks like 2 is going to go into 24 12 times. So 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 24 12 times. Now this 2, a lot of people would be tempted to cancel it with this 4 or cancel it with this other 2. 
But 4k plus 2 is a binomial, and it goes together. It's one factor. If you want to cancel this 2, you have to cancel it with another a factor of 2. And the only way to cancel it with a factor of 2 is to see if this factors. And if you remember, we did that over here. We factored the 4k plus 2 by taking a 2 out. So we could do the same thing over here. We could take a 2 out and change that to 2k plus 1. So there we factored that. Now I can cancel the 2s right here. So I'm going to do that. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 2 once. All right, let's see what we have left. P equals my first fraction. I've got 2k plus 1 over 12. My second fraction, I've got 3 over 2k plus 1. All right, now I've got an adding problem. And adding fractions can be a little bit more difficult because you have to have a common denominator when you're adding. Our least common denominator has to include the factors of both denominators. The first denominator has a factor of 12, so our least common denominator has to have a 12. The second fraction has a factor of 2k plus 1. That can't be factored any further. It's just 2k plus 1, so we're going to need a 2k plus 1 in our least common denominator. Let me write that a little better. That kind of got squished right there. Let's write that nicer. So our least common denominator is 12 times 2k plus 1. All right. So in order to get this least common denominator, the first fraction is going to need a 2k plus 1 in the denominator. So we're going to have to multiply the top and bottom by the, of the first fraction by 2k plus 1. Let me move this equal sign over, give myself a little more room. So I'm going to write that in green. 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1. I have to multiply the top and bottom by 2k plus 1. The second fraction, I'm going to have to multiply by 12 over 12. And that will give me 12 times 2k plus 1 in both denominators. The first fraction, when I multiply the numerators, I have 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. I'm going to have to FOIL that together. Let me write that out a little bit nicer, see what I've got here. So I've got 2k plus 1 over 2k, or excuse me, times 2k plus 1. And then we'll have plus 36. 3 times 12 is 36. And that's all going to be over my common denominator. I have my common denominator now, which is 12 times 2k plus 1. And it doesn't matter if you put the 12 in the front or second because of the commutative property. Looks like we need a little more room to work this out, so I'm going to get rid of this area stuff over here. And let's use this space over here and finish this up. I need to simplify my numerator. So I need to FOIL the 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. I'm looking at this right now, and I've seen many, many students that would cancel these 2k plus 1s. I can't do that unless 2k plus 1 is a factor of the numerator. It's not a factor of the numerator right now because of the plus 36. In order to be a factor, it would have to be a just stuff multiplied together. So in order to determine what the factors of the numerator are, I first have to FOIL this together. Then add the 30. When I say FOIL it, I mean multiply it. Multiply it together. Many people learn that as FOIL. I should probably say multiply in case you haven't. Or distribute the 2k plus 1 into the other 2k plus 1. Then add the 36 with that answer, and then we'll see if it factors after that. Okay, so let's, let's do that. So 2k times 2k is 4k squared. 2k times 1 is 2k. And I move to the next term. 1 times 2k is 2k. And 1 times 1 is 1. And don't forget the plus 36. And that's all over 12 times 2k plus 1. I'm not going to multiply that back together because I want to see if something's going to cancel. And everything needs to be factored in order to see if something's going to cancel. I'm just going to leave it factored. In the numerator, I can simplify by adding my k terms together and my 1 and my 36. Now we have 4k squared plus 4k plus 37. And that's all over 12 times 2k plus 1. To see if anything's going to factor, I'd have to be able to factor the numerator. Now, first thing I'd want to look for is a common factor. 
my coefficients are 4, 4, and 37. 37 is a prime number. There's nothing that's going to go into 4, 4, and 37. The only things that go into 4 are 2, 4, and 1 we don't really care about because that doesn't factor it any, any further for us. So 2 and 4 do not go into 37. That's not greatest common factor is not going to work. The next thing I would check for is to see if this trinomial will factor. When there's a number in front of this k squared term, the way we determine whether this trinomial will factor is to take the first term times the last term, 4 times 37, which would be 120 plus 28, which would be 148, and ask ourselves, is there anything that will multiply to be 148 and add to be the middle number, which is 4? And if this factoring looks really confusing to you, you might want to go search my video on factoring trinomials using the AC method. I need something to multiply to be 148 and add to be 4. That's not going to happen because 4 is a small number and the factors of 48 are definitely 148 are going to add to be more than 4. So therefore, I know that this trinomial is not going to factor. Since that trinomial doesn't factor, means the fraction's not going to be able to be reduced, and I'm done. That is my answer. I'm just going to erase this little circle here if I can. So therefore, my final answer is 4k squared plus 4k plus 37 all over 12 times the quantity 2k plus 1. Kind of a weird answer, but that is it. The thing you need to remember when you're working with rational expressions is they have the same exact rules as when you're working with fractions. Rational expression is like a fancy word for fraction. So how do I add these? I need to think of the same rules I would use to add 2 thirds plus 4 fifths. What rules would I use? I would have to get a common denominator, You know, keep the denominators the same when I add them together, see if it reduces. Just go back to this. You need to be strong at these kind of simpler problems and then apply those concepts to these more difficult problems. Same thing with multiplying fractions. Hope that helps.